The following tutorial is intended to show how to make a digital backup copy of DVDs and Blu-ray discs which you have legally purchased. Any and all digital backup copies made using this tutorial are to be used for your personal slash private use only. Thank you! Okay, now that we've got the serious stuff out of the way, let's dive in. My name is Brian and you're watching Maraxotes Reviews and How To's. Typically in my videos, I like to give background about uh, what inspired me to make a video, but I think that most people just don't care and want me to just get straight to the point. So for once in my life, rather than ramble on and share the backstory that no one cares about in the first place, I'll just skip over my typical informative yet meaningless to anyone but myself introduction about how this video came to be and get straight to the meat and potatoes of what the video is actually about. Not to say that this video is about meat and potatoes. I mean, the title of this video says nothing about potatoes or any kind of meat for that matter. Man, uh, all this talk about meat and potatoes, I'm, I'm feeling kind of hungry. Are you hungry? So lately, I've been dabbling in the world of Plex. If you're not familiar with Plex, I suggest that you check it out because it's pretty darn neato. Plan to make another video talking more about Plex and what I'm wanting to do with my digital movie backup copies and we'll place a link in the video description as well as in the cards right up over here wherever that's at once I do. Anyway, as a result of my dabbling, I needed to make some digital copies of my movie library, most of which is all on DVDs and Blu-ray discs. To turn your physical media into its pure digital form, there are obviously some tools we're going to need. The first of which is a computer with a DVD or Blu-ray drive in it. I think this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it just so there isn't any confusion. If you plan to copy Blu-ray discs, you must have a Blu-ray drive in your computer. Uh, okay, so it doesn't have to be an internal Blu-ray drive. An external drive will work too. Uh, but you must have a Blu-ray drive. You cannot copy Blu-rays if you only have a DVD drive. A Blu-ray drive, however, can be used to read and copy DVDs. The second thing we're going to need are two pieces of software. One is called Make MKV, and the other is called Handbrake. They are both open source programs which you can download and use for free. I've placed links to where you can download them both in the video description. Once you have Make MKV and Handbrake installed, uh, you'll want to load the disk you want to copy into your computer's optical drive and then launch Make MKV. If you have more than one optical drive connected to your computer, you'll want to select the drive with your movie in it from the drop down menu at the top of the window here and then click on the big button that looks like an optical drive. Make MKV will now read the disc and then display a list of the different tracks contained on it. This usually takes a minute or less to do, but I have had a couple that have taken a little bit longer, uh, but once it's done, you'll see a list of tracks similar to this. Now, this part can be a bit of a guessing game. I've used Make MKV to copy over 150 movies so far, and the vast majority of them gave me no information about which track was which, like you see here. Typically, the largest file is the one you're looking for. Since I'm copying a Blu-ray, that happens to be this 31 gigabyte track right here. On a DVD, it'll be the, in the neighborhood of four to six gigabytes, depending on the length of the movie. On some discs, you'll see multiple files of the same size, and in my experience, they are usually alternate language versions of the film. Unfortunately, it's not usually clear which one is which, so you just have to copy them all and delete the files you don't need once you're done. 
The easiest way to select your file is to first right click in the window and choose unselect all. Then tick the box of the file you want to copy. Once it's selected, you can choose where you want to output the digital copy to, or you can simply use the default destination it gives you and then click the make MKV button here on the far right. If the directory you have chosen doesn't yet exist, it will ask if you want to create it. Click yes and make MKV will go to work. On my i7-4790K system, this process takes between 20 and 30 minutes depending on the length of the movie. Once Make MKV has completed its work, you will have a perfect digital copy of your movie in the MKV format, which Windows Media Player cannot play, but can be played using a good video player such as VLC, which if you've never heard of is an awesome open source media player that can play pretty much anything really. Uh, I've placed a link for it in the video description. There is a downside to this MKV copy of your movie, however, and that is that the file size remains more or less at its original size, which in the case of a Blu-ray is in the range of 20 to 30 gigabytes. If you're one of those people that has nearly unlimited storage space on your computer or NAS, and you want to keep your digital copy in its purest, truest form, then you don't have to go any further and can stop this tutorial right here. If you're like me, however, and only have a limited amount of space to store your digital movie library, then you'll want to continue on to our next step, which is to transcode the movie to a smaller, more storage-friendly size using Handbrake. Upon opening Handbrake, you will be prompted to drop a file or folder here. We can then take our MKV file we just created with Make MKV and drop it into Handbrake like so. Handbrake will then quickly scan the file and you'll see this. Here there are all different kinds of options we can play with and customize. To be honest, I don't really mess with any of these because for my purposes, I've found the presets on the far right here work fantastic. Uh, my favorite one to use that I feel gives me a good quality digital copy and also significantly reduces storage space is the HQ 1080p 30 surround. I understand simply using a preset that I like isn't for everyone, so you are of course free to try out any of the presets you want as well as create your own custom presets. I'd recommend taking a five minute clip of some kind and trying out the presets you want to see as well as play around with the different settings and just see what you're most happy with. Uh, once you have things dialed in where you want them, you'll want to come down to the save as field here at the bottom of the window. Give your file a name and then click browse to choose where you want to save it to. Once you've done that, you can click the green button here at the top of the window to start encoding. The encoding process takes quite a bit of time. So at this point, you'll most likely want to walk away from your computer and go watch a movie or work on another project of some kind, or just go to bed. I would often queue up three or four movies to be encoded, go to bed, and when I'd wake up in the morning, they'd I'll be finished. Oh, this reminds me. If you want to encode more than one movie at a time, you can click on open source in the upper left of the window and then repeat the same process of dropping your MKV file into the window, selecting your encoding options, where and what to save your file as, and then simply click the add to queue button here. And once Handbrake is finished encoding the first video, it will automatically begin encoding the next video in the queue. With your movie file now transcoded, let's do a quick comparison of our file sizes. The original MKV container file we started with was 23.9 gigabytes. After Handbrake has worked its magic, we now have a much more storage space friendly 4.23 gigabyte MP4 container file we can copy to our phone, tablet, NAS, or whatever other device we want. And for a quick comparison of the video quality, 
On the left side of the screen is playback of the 23.9 gigabyte MKV file. And on the right is the 4.23 gigabyte MP4. As you can see, the video quality of our much smaller MP4 movie is still really good. Before I conclude this video, I need to go back to Make MKV for a little bit. I have nothing but good things to say about Make MKV. It's a fantastic, simple to use program that does its job excellently. I copied over 150 movies using it without any issues at all. However, there was one movie that for reasons I was unable to figure out, Make MKV failed to copy. I tried all the troubleshooting steps that they offer on their website and it, that they have in their forums, but it just wouldn't work. The funny thing is this particular movie had the original theatrical version as well as an extended version of the film on the same disc. Make MKV can copy the theatrical version without any issue. However, when I try to copy the extended version, it always fails, but where there's a will, there's a way, and after a few hours of Googling, I learned another way to get it done. But it required that I download a program called NEDVD from Red Fox. I know the name says DVD in it, but don't worry, it can copy Blu-ray discs as well. Unlike Make MKV, NEDVD is not a free program, but is available to download and evaluate for free for a period of 21 days. A one-year subscription costs 59 euros or around $70 US, or you can purchase a lifetime subscription for 109 euros or around 130 US dollars. Once you have any DVD installed, you can load your DVD or Blu-ray into your optical drive and double click the any DVD icon and any DVD will begin to scan your disc. Once it's completed its scan, all you'll see is your desktop. So to copy our disc, we need to click the up arrow icon here in our system tray, then right click on the any DVD Fox logo guy, which brings up this little menu. Here we want to select rip video disc to hard disc, which will bring up the any DVD ripper window. In the source directory dropdown, you'll want to select your optical drive with your movie in it. And in the destination directory field, you can click on the little file folder icon to choose where you want to save your movie to. With those things taken care of, all that's left is to click copy disc and you're off to the races. Once any DVD has finished ripping the disc, you're going to end up with a folder that looks something like this. When you open it up, it has the exact same file structure as you'd find on the disc itself because what you now have is a decrypted digital copy of your movie that you can then burn onto another disc if you want or import into Handbrake, which is what we're going to do, and transcode into another file format like an MP4, which can be copied to and played on all your electronic devices. The transcoding process in Handbrake this time around is pretty much the same. Uh, we just have a couple of small differences. The first thing that's different is rather than dragging the single MKV file into Handbrake, we need to drop in this entire folder. Handbrake will then scan the titles just like before and drop us into the main interface. The other thing that's different here than when transcoding an MKV is we need to select the track we want to transcode. In the title dropdown, we have a list of the different tracks. To the right of the track name is a timecode indicating the length of each track. In this case, I want to copy the extended version of this movie, which happens to be the longest track here at 2 hours, 54 minutes, and 24 seconds. And from there, the rest of this should all be very familiar. I select my transcoding options, the name of the file, where I want to save it to, and then start the encoding process. Encoding this movie took about three hours to complete, 
But now, here we have the extended version of the film in a nice, slim 6.18 gigabyte MP4 and makes a wonderful addition to my digital movie library. And with that, it's time to wrap up this video. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching the video. I hope that it has been a great help to you. And I wish you the very best as you get to work backing up your movie collection and creating your very own digital movie library. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and hit the like button before you head out. If you have a question or comment for me, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond to you there. If you like what I do on my channel and would like to help me continue to make more content like this, I invite you to check out my Amazon store where you can purchase items I feature in my videos. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to hanging out with you again in my next video. Later.